Hello, YouTube travelers, and welcome to San Francisco International Airport, where the duty-free shops are actually open. Despite significant delays caused by winter weather across the United States, I've actually made it in time for my connection on United's Polaris business class from San Francisco to Tokyo Narita. Unfortunately, the Polaris lounge was closed in the International Terminal, so I didn't get to experience it, though there were lounges open in the other terminals. Instead, I've gone directly to the gate and am trying to make sense of a confusing scene. Although only two minutes past the appointed boarding time, the signage already indicates the gate is closed. That was disconcerting, though happily, downstairs there was still a large crowd of passengers waiting to board. Unfortunately, however, there didn't seem to be any kind of priority boarding lane, and oddly, they only used one jet bridge going to the L2 door. This seemed odd given that they had another jet bridge which you would think they would use for the business class passengers. The business class cabin is large, and seeing as this is a 787-10, has the new seats in a 1 2 1 configuration. The seats are staggered, and I chose odd numbered seat 3A so that I'd be closer to the window and hopefully have a little more privacy. Although the cabin itself seemed cramped with narrow aisles, the seats looked new and impressive, and there were a tower of amenities waiting for me at my seat. As you squeeze through the small direct aisle access passageway, you see a small countertop where you can store personal effects, as well as a headphone jack power outlet, and IFE controller. Above that is a small storage compartment with the headphones. Now let's look at this tower of goodies. First up, we've got this Polaris branded amenity kit, a nice looking blanket with Saks Fifth Avenue embroidered branding, and oh, this is nice, a memory foam pillow. I like that. Additionally, there's a second larger pillow. Oh, but look here. There's an unappealing hair stuck to the pillow. This kind of makes me wonder if this pillow is left over from the last flight. This pillow also has the Saks Fifth Avenue branding. I better check the rest of this pillow. Uh-oh, here's an even more egregious offender. I'll have to deal with that in a moment. Meanwhile, here's a view from the seated position. We've got the TV screen, a USB outlet, a small storage slot, presumably for a tablet, and a table that pulls out underneath. It's not huge, but you could get some work done here. And this is pretty neat. There's a little area here where you could prop up your tablet. And underneath here, we've got some slippers in the footwell that tapers down to a narrow point. Here's all the controls for the seat, as well as some of the lighting controls. And this button here allows you to electronically dim your window shade, though I know some people aren't too crazy about that feature. Next up, we have a personal reading light, and, oh look, somebody's used bottle cap. Honestly, I'm not sure why you design a seat with a well like this. It's reminiscent of that American Airlines 787 with all the fluid in it. It's evidently hard to clean, but also doesn't seem like it serves any purpose. Now here's a feature I do like, personal air vents. I wish all airlines had these. Lastly, there's a hook next to the TV for a coat hanger though it's in a poor position because your coat would partially obscure the screen. Now before I finally get settled into my seat, here's a look at the business class cabin for a sense of scale. So, how about a welcome drink? Sorry, no, the flight attendant says they're only allowed to serve water on the ground. So instead, let's have a look at the amenity kit. Now a lot of you have asked me what I do with all the amenity kits I collect. Well, this is pretty good. It looks like United will donate unused portions of kits left behind to charities. In this case, however, I'm going to hold on to my kit. It's been more than a year and a half since I've flown Polaris, and I don't have one like this. This one seems like it's got a pretty good size to it. Here's a unique touch. They've got the Polaris North Star logo incorporated into the zipper. So let's have a look at what's inside. Whoa, it's bursting at the seams with goodies. Here's a pouch labeled Sunday Rally. Let's take a look at that in a moment. Oh, this is useful. A micro pen. Always good to have one of those. And here's a package of tissues. As well as a dental kit. Oh, this is pretty impressive. It's a nice looking eye mask. I'll definitely use that. 
And here we've got some earplugs. And a decent looking pair of socks. Oh look, here's the Polaris logo on the tread. Those are pretty nice. Okay, let's see what's in this little pouch. Here's all the stuff that was inside. We've got a lip balm. There's a tube of hand cream. Some face cream. As well as this facial cleansing cloth. Also, there's a card with a promo code for Sunday Rally Toiletries. I don't plan to take advantage of it, but you viewers are free to try it and see if it works. Alright, here's the plan for today. San Francisco to Tokyo. I'm exhausted after having traveled all last night, so I'm excited to get this show on the road, or more appropriately, in the air. There wasn't a great spot to work it into the video before, but while we were still on the ground, the flight attendant came to ask me what I would like for my lunch entree. There were no menus, so I don't know why she presumed I knew what the options were, but when pressed, she confided that there was a beef short rib, a pasta, and a fish, which for today was turbo. It wasn't long before we were out over the Pacific, but in the interim, here's a look at some of the beautiful views. If you enjoy flight reviews, please hit the like and subscribe so you'll be notified every time there's a new video on the Gentleman of Fortune channel. And if window views aren't your thing, you can jump ahead to about the 7 minute mark where the commentary will recommence. With the scenery behind us, here's a look at the headphones they provide. Now these headphones are certainly better than the earbuds they give you on domestic flights, though to be perfectly honest, they're not that impressive especially when compared to the other carriers that service this route. I suppose they'll do the job though. So now that I've been sitting here a while and getting comfortable in my environment, I noticed a few other items the cleaning crew missed. It looks to be a used earplug and some carpet lint. Now that we're finally airborne and they can serve drinks, I've received this innominate sparkling wine served in a plastic cup on this somewhat ironic napkin. United's website advertises a restaurant quality, multi-course in-flight dining experience, though sadly that seems to be another victim of COVID, as now everything is delivered on a single tray. Upon initial inspection, the meat appeared to be overcooked and dried out. Happily, I can report that in this case, looks were deceiving, and the meat was tender and succulent, as were the vegetables that accompanied it. Unfortunately, with everything crammed onto one tray, some of the stylish elements are lost in the clutter, like these two little salt and pepper globes, reminiscent of the Continental Globe logo design. Hey look, mixed nuts. I bet that would have gone great with the drink service. This little foil cup of blood red barbecue sauce actually made the meal pretty tasty, as you would expect, because it seemed to be about half sugar. After the lunch service, the flight attendant offered up a Bailey's or an Amaretto. I suspect there were other options, but again, there was no menu, and the flight attendant wasn't otherwise forthcoming with that information. Now that the meal service is complete, I'm ready for a nap, but before I set up the bed, here's a look at the slippers they provide, which are surprisingly plush and comfortable. Not bad. In theory, on flights over 12 hours, pajamas are available on demand. They certainly didn't mention them, so I'm not sure if they're still available or if they were a victim of cost cutting. I definitely would have rather worn pajamas than wrinkle my clothes. If there's a next time on Polaris, I'll have to look into it. I can say with certainty, however, that the now clean pillow and blanket were very comfortable. Before laying down to make up for lost sleep, I visited the lavatory where I discovered another unique amenity. Mixed in there among the hand creams and lotions, this bottle of Garmin crew. Now this is a great idea, and not one that I've seen on any other carrier. I'm afraid that more times than I'd like to count, part of my lunch or dinner has ended up on my pants or shirt. Other than a little bit more spacious accommodation than is normal, and a fold-down changing table, there's little else to report from the lavatory. So on that note, I'm going to head back to my seat and try to get some sleep. Despite getting quite a few hours of sleep, 
didn't really feel rested. I developed a pretty good headache, which I'm not sure if I should attribute to the quality of the sparkling wine or my overall exhaustion. Probably both. Either way, I wasn't particularly interested in the breakfast, which was served about an hour before landing. Here's a look at the quiche and sausages. Not very long after the meal was served, we touched down in Tokyo at around 2.20 in the afternoon. To be honest, I'm not that crazy about this flight's schedule. The departure timing provides lousy connectivity unless you're starting on the west coast, and the arrival time kind of wastes the day. But then I guess the schedule is probably based around the flight timing in the opposite direction. Overall, there were a lot of thoughtful touches that were put into this product, though sadly, I came away from the experience not that impressed. There were the obvious cleaning deficiencies that no amount of self-promotion is going to make up for. But the biggest shortfall, I felt, was the interaction with the cabin crew, who just seemed to be unengaged. It's too bad, really, because I feel this Polaris business class has so much potential, but just doesn't deliver. Unari-kun here encourages everyone to subscribe and hit the like button or leave a comment on your experiences or observations with Polaris Business Class and reminds you, until the next video, safe travels.